What's going on, Packers fans? Aaron Nagler here, hanging with the hitman. Tazim, how you doing? I missed you last week. I was down in Disney, but I'm ready to chop it up. How you doing? Hey, man. I'm I'm doing very well and getting more and more excited as we find out a little few more things about, obviously, this team and then also about the prospects for this team. So oh, yes. it, it's exciting. So, yeah, I mentioned I was down at Disney, but, you know, one of the reasons we couldn't reconvene later in the week is because you were at a pro day. Look at you, professional scout over here. Where well, were you? you? You know, just supporting supporting the Howard University uh, contingent. Very good. And you know, we actually have a a guy who's uh, pretty pretty you know sought out in terms of the way the league you know feels about him, and that's our huge lineman, um, Akin Donqua. I think is the way they pronounce nice. his name. Um, and when it, when I say huge, I mean he he is he is a giant. I mean six man. eight, you know, almost three, well he's three fifty plus. Jeez, uh, now <laughs> that that's the he's the known quantity, and right. he certainly, uh, you know, he he's going to be one of those guys who it's not about necessarily the the physical testing. He 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 moves well enough, but he's going to be a you know he'll be a developmental type of guy right where i believe someone will, will bring him in about mid round and then he should you know be able to to develop into i don't, I don't know if you remember a guy they called him zeus well his, his son's playing now so of course you orlando right Brown, yep right? of course Se exact same type of deal you know came from our conference the MEAC. Uh, he played at south carolina state obviously i, I was at howard but um not to linger on that no it's fine the, man. the surprise the surprise, and, and when I when I say surprise, not so much on what he did in college, but we had a we have a kick returner by the name of Ian Wheeler, okay, and when I tell you that he he showed out, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm talking <laughs> about Baylor he Pro would have been in terms of you know a guy you're looking for as a as a special teams ace a returner mm -hmm. he, he would have certainly been he, he he this is a high nine he might even be a 10 tester he, he was a 38 and a half inch vertical and th th these are the two things that stood out to me i mean he, he did well in everything mm -hmm. 38 and a half inch vertical and a four three five forty. okay and he's he's not small i mean he, he's like almost 210 Two hundred ten pound, you know, five hundred five eleven kick returner, and and I mean he he looked okay. like that on the field. It's mm -hmm. just that you know you you're not really sure when you're talking about you know FCS competition, right? So it's like, what is it going to look like, you know, when he goes up against you know the big boys? Well, mm -hmm. I mean, he 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 runs big boy <laughs> times, big boy numbers, so, no doubt right. about it. Right. right. Look, talking about the draft and pro days are going on, obviously, and we're starting to get kind of some solidified information on a lot of these prospects, something that I saw you tweet out. And I got to tell you, man, I love doing this with you because all I have to do is peruse your Twitter account and find <laughs> out like where, where are the pressure points? Where are the things that get you going? And uh, something that I, I, I actually thought was pretty informative and it's not something I had thought of before, but you're hundred percent correct is the vernacular around the 30 visits that teams are allowed you mm -hmm. kind of made a point to say, look, I, I keep seeing people refer to them as top 30 visits, and right. that's not what they are. Explain that. They, they, the, the understanding that, that people need to have is that each team is allowed 30 visits. Okay. So they get to bring 30 people into their facilities and answer any questions really that they may have about that player, whether they be medical um hey look how how is he on the whiteboard um, right you know how how is he going to really jibe with our culture you know th those types of things and people refer will call it a top 30 visit as if these are the top 30 you know prospects that they have on their draft board and it's it's just a misnomer that that is a bad term to use because quite frankly if you really want to know what the 30 visits are used for a lot in the NFL. It's to throw out some smoke and mirrors right. <laughs> to other teams as to who they may or may not be interested in. So if you're really looking at it from the standpoint of the very top of the draft 
to the guys who are possibly going to be late rounders or undrafted free agents, then you may see some of those. But everybody else, everybody else coming in there, you don't know anything about why they why are there. It, <laughs> right. it, it, they could literally just be to throw other teams off. And the bottom line is top 30 visits in their use for the team themselves mm. is to answer questions. If they don't have questions, they can draft a guy in the first round like they did in 22 who never had a top 30 visit. I mean, uh, Brian's, <laughs> Brian's literal first pick ever, Jair Alexander, didn't take a visit. They barely spoke to him throughout the draft process, right? And I remember right. talking to Brian about this a couple of years ago at the Combine where he said, you know, he is very – not very different, but a little different than Ted in this regard because with Ted, it was almost all – undrafted and or late round guys that they had questions on maybe some medical stuff and i remember he said one time ted got mad because they brought in a quarterback uh who was going to be drafted like in the kind of middle of the draft it was projected to go like third fourth round and ted got pissed because they had burned a visit on one of these guys where he liked to only bring in you know late round undraftable right. dudes right. and right. brian has been a little more kind of, I'm not going to say aggressive, but a little more, I think, to your point, using it as a tool to, yes, gather information, but also maybe throw people off the scent a little bit as far as some of the guys who are projected to go earlier in the draft. He'll right. definitely bring them in. He has done that over the course of his tenure. But a lot of times he has no plans whatsoever of drafting some of these guys. <laughs> I love the gamesmanship. I yeah. love it. I mean, you got to, it's a, look, this is a multi-billion dollar business mm -hmm. where you actually need to take salary cap considerations into play when you're constructing your team and quite frankly who we're going to get in when it comes to the draft you need that needs to be as much of a secret as it possibly can be <laughs> up until the point where we take them mm -hmm. because if someone jumps ahead of you for one of your top guys then that that then it, it hurts you. Now you got to keep moving down your your list yep. as opposed to you having a list that is completely different. And that's the other thing about draft boards. People act like there are 32 draft boards all the same. Yep. Everyone is different. <laughs> Every single draft board is different. So it, you want to keep yours in-house. As locked up as possible, no doubt about it. And it's funny because I was talking to Richmond Williams, the director of pro personnel for the Packers, uh, for our draft guide. And he had mentioned, you know, some of the things that go on in the lead up to the draft, the back channel stuff about finding out, trying to find out, trying to get information, maybe through guys that you've worked with as a personnel person or even as a coach throughout your tenure in the league. You may know a guy that you used to be on staff with who, who's now somewhere else. And you're trying to get every little morsel of information. Now, some places are more buttoned up than others, but I think fans would be surprised about how much of that goes on, right? The back channel kind of beers on the table chats about certain guys who you like, who you don't. Oh, there's a guy. Well, we'll never and he'll we'll never take him, etc. Um, I just find that kind of fascinating. They call it lying season, right? Everything that we hear in the public, you know, you got to take with a major grain of salt. It is lying season, and even that's used to actually put seeds out there and grow in people's heads that, <laughs> again, are not true. They're never going to happen. And understand this also, Aaron, about the boards. Also, not everyone in-house is allowed to oh, see the boards. Exactly. That kind of shocked me <laughs> when I found this out a couple of years ago. Like, yeah, they, that is locked up literally. Right. To the point where it's in a room, that room is locked, and only certain people can get in and see it. That right. that's kind of wild to me. <laughs> but it, I mean, it, it that's just kind of how it goes. I mean, even look when when I coached when I was coaching with New Orleans, and and it was time to go over the actual players when you're you're breaking down, you only would get to break down your players. And I'm, I'm talking about the coaches. So you can't even look at the other coaches' depth chart, right. the, the real one, right? Mm -hmm. So, 
like, okay, here comes defensive backs, coaches. We come in, okay, linebackers, coach just left, right? And so we come in there, we sit down, and he then he slides, Sean slides this board over. We can't even see. Not allowed. Anybody else's. <laughs> I mean, it's, hey, man, it, it, it's, a, it's a business that is, it's high-level stakes. So having certain things leak can – can be disastrous, quite frankly, to what you're attempting to do. Funny that we talking about lying season and things that are said publicly. Some things are said publicly now uh, regarding the Packers and their acquisitions or their re-signings. One in particular, Keyshawn Nixon back in the fold since we last spoke. Uh, that that has occurred, and you and I had a bit of a back and forth about it. And I'm with you. I know we've talked about it here on on the pod before, but. I'm fascinated listening to Brian talk about how how much confidence he has in Keyshawn uh, from the nickel spot and the fact that he did have he did play so many snaps last year. And I think, you know, Brian's never going to say anything negative about a guy, but you you can certainly turn on the tape and find real kind of wide swaths of inconsistency to Mm -hmm. Keyshawn's game. So when you're looking at the fact that, yes, they have paid him, they can probably get out of that deal after one year. I got to think they're absolutely not done bringing in competition for the nickel spot for any of the sub packages, because, you know, yes, you've got half you've got a whole new crew that are going to be able to coach him up. Right. Probably Mm -hmm. you're hoping in, in, in a way that continues to bring the best out of him, but man, there's, there's some talent in this draft that they could bring in and could relegate Keyshawn to dime and, or just deep sub, which I got to expect is still the plan. It has to be looking at where we are now as a team and our prospects moving forward, really, for the next several years until such time as they have to make some big financial decisions. But mm-hmm. we, it, we're we at a point right now where the window is wide open. I mean, it, it's not cracked. I mean, the window right. is wide open. So yep. the people we need on the field need to be people we actually can count on and it's not just development. I mean, it, we we are beyond that now. It, it's time when we send you out there now, we expect you to make the play that was drawn up to be made. And when we looked at the season last year for Keyshawn, the fact of the matter is the young man was an absolute masterful returner, kick returner to be exact. But as a nickel corner he had some struggles in coverage and defensive backs in the nfl as in particular inside that that inside guy who has people who can go both so you got a two-way release two way goes you also are a lot more involved in the mix he he has some struggles there and so when we look at it and we say is he our guy meaning he, he is he entrenched there I, I can't see that as being the case when we look at the rest of the roster like l- look at what we're doing at kicker we 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 understand how important that position was and that we were developing it last year and i also they they won't be able to convince me aaron <laughs> that we were actually better than they thought we would be as well because Mm -hmm. i don't believe they would have been developing a kicker if they would have known that this team was going to ascend as quickly as it did was going to put it together the way they did right right because then now you're talking about we are we're now in the one game away from the nsc championship game and we have a kicker who everybody was holding their breath and what happened (sighs) he missed missed. you know so for for me that's the same with nickel. I mean, what did we watch all last year at nickel? It's like, okay, he made the 50 yarder, right? The the 50 plus yarder field goals. Mm-hmm. He made those. Well, so that Ke- Keisha had the, the great play, you know, against, against Kansas city mm-hmm. and, you know, got the interception. But then we also saw against the New York giants where, I mean, who, who was it? Um, the young man from Kentucky. Stuff. I mean, he he routed him. He routed him. I mean, he left. 
I don't think he was within five yards of him, you know, when he caught on that the ball final, on that, on that last final drive, drive on that right? last drive. So, yeah. so, I mean, that's that, that you, you just, you want something better than that in crucial situations. And the last point though, I'll make is this Aaron. We also know that the system last year wasn't mm. conducive to a lot of the guys. Well, this is what I'm wondering. Right. Yeah. This is what I'm wondering as far as what they see with Halfley, with the system brand new that they're going to be right. implementing, what they're going to ask him to do, because that's right. it. Right. You don't tell me what he can't do. Tell me what he can do. OK, well, what is that? What do they see? Because I, I like I said, I've seen games. I think, you know, look at the Dallas game. I think he played pretty well, you know, the, mm -hmm. the playoff game. Right. But to your point, yeah, I can point to a lot of other games where he was pretty inconsistent, you know, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. guys are able to kind of get you know some real easy separation in a way that you know makes you kind of scared to call man coverage right you know right flat out i mean you just know your nickel is going to get beat right. so and, and and that's what that's the part it and it, it was one dale robinson who i was i was trying to think of though the, those, those quick guys i mean he he hasn't been able to no. to stay with them. I mean, no, that, he hasn't. And look, we saw that sad. back. We saw that last summer. I'll never forget sitting there. I think you can find the tweets. You know where we're sitting there going. You know he looks the part physically, but man, you get him in space and guys can get get away from him pretty pretty easily. And that's right. look and uh, look. I, I know it probably sounds like we're like ripping on the guy, but it's like that's just what's there. Like you can see it on the tape. You just got to turn it on. And it's no knock on him. He's being put in those positions repeatedly at some right. point that is on the coaching staff to either and, and, and switch it, it up or right. get someone else in there. And that, that That's where I'm hoping we are is what happened is they were attempting to put the square peg in a round hole last yeah. year. And Hathley, as you know, Goody has shared with us, mm. watch the film and he can see what use or what role he needs to play. Yeah. And if that's the case, and again, you're able to take his skill set and use it in this particular defense, and it may not be at nickel. Right. Exactly. You know, we don't we we just don't know. I know that that relative to what we have seen and the use we have seen, it does not seem to be conducive to his skill set in the Na National Football League. It, it's not consistent totally enough. Yeah. Totally agree. Um, one other thing, like I said, perusing your Twitter account, I, I, I said on Daily the other day, I'm going to give you a little grief for this because I think it's funny because you were not alone here, but the UFL kicker hits a 64-yarder and everyone loses their mind. It's like <laughs> our guy hit a 62-yarder in preseason last year. I understand we're all frustrated with the kicker, but it's not time to just burn it down because some UFL guy made a 64 yard. That's all I'm saying. But 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 think about it from the standpoint of the totality of what we're looking at. Mm -hmm. This was a holistic evaluation for me because mm -hmm. what I want to see is what happens when this guy actually just does regular kicks. This, right. This is the first kick this guy ever did. And it's the, I mean, it's he's, a the kick, most he's a kickoff pressure. specialist for guys. It's the most <laughs> pressure you can have. Right. He has to win a game in his first kick since high school. He has to win a game. He should have – what the he expectation – He should have shanked it. He yeah. should have shanked that shit all the way to, <laughs> to the left. You know, exactly. That, that, that thing should have gone <laughs> in the bleachers to the left. Or, and he or nails right, it. You know? And he, he nailed it twice. Yep. He, two times in a row so what what i'm i'm gonna tell you my thought was deeper than what i really shared on the mm -hmm. on the um on, on Twitter. the x machine right. on x <laughs> my thought was this maybe these soccer players or more have more resolve in those situations they're not running out there like a guy who was just a kicker Right. So this guy plays soccer. He he actually is an athlete. He actually played the games. So mm. the kick part of it to him was just a rec routine yeah. part it's of the game. So that was my thought process in it. And yeah, I mean, it, the thing though would have been good for from like 10 I mean, more, that's it the went thing, into the net. Right? I mean, it would have been good that, for ten more yards. Exactly. The fact that he probably hits from seventy with that right. kick is pretty insane. 
it's right. it's pretty great. It was fun to. I mean, it was hilarious though. Like my entire Twitter feed just blew up. Oh yeah, this guy oh, hit yeah. the sixty four yarder. I'm like, yeah, oh, everybody, everybody, cool. yeah, we, it got us. It got all of us. It was great. No, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, and this is always a lot of fun. Tazim, I can't thank you enough. Um, the Cheesehead TV draft guide is coming out tomorrow. Tazim, I know you have contributed to it. What can people expect? Uh, from your contribution to the Cheesehead TV draft guide. Well, you know, I know that. Most people are used to watching all of the top guys and their interviews on TV and kind of the, the draft process. And the fact of the matter is the majority of the guys who will sign with teams, you don't, most people don't even know about. They, they don't see those guys. They weren't at the combine. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling that story, the long shot story, which was my story at, at the time that I was drafted by Green Bay. No combine invite, no pro day, no none of the things that people are used to seeing as to how you get to the NFL draft. But yet I and others have been drafted that way. I love it. Absolutely love it. Can't wait. That drops tomorrow, Wednesday, April 3rd. Tazim, this is always a treat. Thanks so much for your time, man. Hey, thank you, man. Go pack, go. Go pack.